While social distancing is a fairly lonely and boring existence, with modern technology we're closer than ever to our friends, families and loved ones, despite being so far apart. With video conferencing software such as FaceTime and Skype, we've been able to chat face to face with other people no matter where they are in the world. All you needed was an internet connection and a smart device. But in the current climate, one company has become the front runner and Zoom to the top of the list in terms of popularity. When Eric Yuan started Zoom video communications in 2011, he could scarcely have imagined how popular it would become in such a short space of time, which led to its share price doubling overnight along with Yuan's net worth. But how did Eric Yuan see into the future and create one of the most popular and critical methods of mass communication in the modern age, becoming a nine-year overnight success in 2020? Here's how it happened. The initial idea popped into Eric's head when he was studying for his maths and computer science degree at Shandong University in China. He and his girlfriend, now wife, studied at different universities and they regularly travelled the 10 hours by train just to see each other face to face. Hating the monotonous and arduous journey, Yuan tried to imagine a simpler way of communication. In the mid 90s, Yuan decided to move from his native China to the US primarily because of the internet. Like a cat with nine lives, Eric finally obtained his visa after eight unsuccessful applications and landed in Silicon Valley, now known as the Global Center for Technological Innovation, joining the firm Webex as their 12th employee. But whilst engaging with their customers, Eric understood that few people were happy with the collaboration and communication tools out there on the market. And in 2011, inspired by the desire to make communication easier, Eric left the firm to start his own venture, Zoom, with more than 40 of his fellow engineers following him and officially launching the platform in 2012. Headquartered in San Jose, California, but with an R&D team in China, the firm set out on its path to rapid growth. Yuan personally responded to every customer who cancelled the service in order to figure out ways to make the product better. Someone even once responded saying that the firm was sending automated emails pretending to be the CEO of Zoom, suggesting that the company was being dishonest. Yuan responded immediately, stating that he was in fact the CEO, and even offered to Zoom call the individual there and then to prove it. Zoom's success came mostly because it was a neutral platform, not linked to global corporations such as Google or Apple, and anyone could join meetings or video chats just by clicking the link in an email. Videos could be recorded, audio could be converted to transcripts, and people could screen share. The software also has more playful features, such as soft focus mode and a green screen style background to make it seem like you're working from the beach. The Zoom video conferencing software was affordable, easy to use, and was very scalable, and it could support groups from two people all the way up to conferences of 500. In 2017, just five years after launching the business, the firm had hosted over 20 billion annualized meeting minutes and are able to call Fortune 500 companies and the top 200 US universities as their client base. That same year, the firm became a unicorn after it was valued at around a billion dollars. Two years later, the firm went public, with shares climbing 72% on the first day of trading to reach a market cap of $16 billion, which saw Yuan's net worth rise to $3 billion. But this rise in success pales in comparison to the first quarter of 2020. When the coronavirus struck in January, Zoom understood early what impact it would have, as their Chinese office closed, quickly followed by their San Jose HQ. When schools in Japan and Italy closed in February, Zoom gave free access to schools to take classes online. Zoom really understood the magnitude of the crisis when their daily users went from 10 million in December 2019 to 200 million four months later. As most stocks around the world started tumbling and losing up to 50% of their value, Zoom's share price rose, surging from $68 in January to $160 in March, increasing Yuan's net worth further to $5.6 billion. With most people around the world now working from home, video conferencing platforms have exploded by way of user traffic. But who's using Zoom? 
doctors to treat patients, teachers to teach classes, lawyers to mediate interviews, actors to do rehearsals, employees to maintain team chemistry, Alcoholics Anonymous to hold meetings, quiz nights, birthday parties, even funerals. You name it, it's happening on VC. And away from work, even just people keeping in contact with loved ones, because body language and facial expressions account for up to 70% of communication, so face-to-face -face contact is critical. Zoom works by adjusting the bandwidth so that one person's poor internet speed doesn't affect everyone else's call. To do this, Zoom links the users to 17 data centers and its cloud storage capacity thanks to Amazon Web Services to deal with the surges. But even that success has come with a number of concerning problems as the harsh reality of supernatural growth begins to hit home. Previously, massive corporations like Facebook and Twitter have had years to set strategy, deal with increased demand, and improve their infrastructure to support every user. The crush of new users on the company has meant that there were shortcuts and oversights, especially when it came to their T's and C's. They allowed hackers to troll classrooms, with the individuals called Zoom bombers who would shout racist remarks and put inappropriate content on screen. They shared the contents of video chats with advertising companies. They launched an attendee attention tracking tool, which showed who wasn't paying attention. The iPhone app was sharing user data with Facebook, and in some meetings were even routed through China, even though nobody was based there, which begs the question, are China listening in on the conversations? Despite the issues, the firm came up with a number of solutions and amended the privacy policy, stopped sharing transcripts, updated the iPhone app, removed the attention tracker, provided training against Zoom bombing attacks, and finally adding passwords to all Zoom meetings. In order to simplify video calls, Zoom have created a platform that is more easily targeted and manipulated, and has left people asking the question, simplicity comes at what cost? With Zoom now embedded within everyday life as we spend more and more days apart, will the software return to its original use and just become another video conferencing company? Yuan has repeated that this was never the path he would have chosen for his company, and suggests that he's no longer really in control, just steering the ship and hoping the tech withstands the pressure. He states that Zoom is now owned by the entire world, and it's our collective responsibility to figure out how to make it work. And that's how it happened. Please like and subscribe to the channel and let us know what you want to see next by leaving a comment below and we'll show you how it happened. Thanks for watching.